Hi guys, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about faints and blackouts. Um, a lot of people come to me and see me in my clinic because they've had a, a period or a an episode where they've either fainted or blacked out and today I wanted to talk to you about the difference between the two and what kind of things could cause them and what to do about it. Um, so the first thing is that generally there is a distinction between fainting and the blackout, all right? Although they can both be associated with loss of consciousness. Fainting usually is a symptom which is accompanied by some kind of aura. Uh, a person will feel something not quite right and they will often do something to try and avoid falling but often they're not able to do it quick enough to stop themselves from falling. So common auras are uh, visual disturbance. People can get uh, sort of buzzing in their ears or, um, you know, just haziness or some kind of visual disturbance. Um, often they can get a little bit hot and a little bit clammy and they just generally just feel unwell and their heart starts racing. And then they they say, oh, look, I'm not quite feeling right. I need to go out or I need to stand up or something like that. And um, if they don't, if they're not able to do that quick enough, they often faint. Now, when they faint, they usually slump. They don't just go boom. You know, they usually slump. Either someone stops them from falling or they fall on the floor, but they don't really hurt themselves because there's something that is, um, that uh, they can do to try and uh, minimize the impact of falling. Uh, and when they're on the floor, they often are, so they have an altered level of consciousness. So, uh, you know, the, they may be mumbling or they may be doing, making funny movements or something like that. And then slowly they come around and they're helped up and they go on their way. That's a typical faint. A blackout is slightly different. A blackout is where you have no warning whatsoever. So basically, particularly when it comes from the heart, so you're uh, walking along or you're standing and then without any warning, you just boom, out like a light, light switched off and bang, you end up on the floor. You often injure yourself because there is no warning. You can't do anything to stop yourself from falling uh, and the person uh, falls on the floor. The loss of consciousness is only very transient, very short-lived. There is no, you know, there's no, n nothing else. And often the patient is either able to get up again or they sit on the floor uh, and they have no, they, they, they don't know what happened. You know, they just do, they, they, there's nothing that they can say, well, without warning, I just ended up on the floor. And they often have, they've often cracked their skull or sustained a cut or injured themselves. So the one distinction I use between people who fainted and people who've blacked out is how suddenness, had the suddenness of their episode, how it started. And for that, it's really important to have a witness. And if you have a witness, someone who's observed this, then it's always useful to ask them exactly what happened. Did I, was I, did I, did I just go bang or did, you know, was I not quite feeling right? Um, and that often helps. Now, blackouts are certainly a lot more worrying than faints. Uh, and the reason for this is because with blackouts, you're not getting a warning, all right? And because you're not getting a warning, you can't do anything about it. And often blackouts are accompanied with injury and the injury itself may be dangerous, particularly as you're, if you're an older person, then just falling, you know, and uh, could result in breaking a hip or something like that. And that can be extremely dangerous. So we tend to be a lot more worried when we have people coming in and come telling us that they're blacked out compared to if they're fainted. The mechanisms are quite different. In fainting, it's really something to do with the blood pressure. So what happens is um, uh, they have something called vasovagal syncope, which is that, uh, for example, for us to sit and or stand up as human beings, something has to happen within our bodies to stop all the blood from falling to the floor. Because if you stand up or if you're sitting up, the blood would automatically go down, gravity would pull all our blood down and it would all go to our legs and the brain would be devoid of blood and we would collapse, okay? Um, now, we are equipped by nature with some reflexes that allow us to stop doing that. So, um, our, uh, we have valves in our legs and our everything in our bodies tightens up, our blood vessels tighten up when we stand up 
And that what that does is it stops blood from being sucked down by gravity and keeps the blood up so it keeps going to our brain and keeps up, uh, keeps us um, uh, you know upright and and conscious. Also, our heart starts beating faster to try and get more blood around the body. So because to try and counteract this effect of gravity. Um, but what happens in some people is that these reflexes can get sluggish. So although they're able to stand up and everything is tight, then everything lets go and the blood starts going down. And because of the back of the brain is the furthest away from the floor, that's the first area that will notice this lack of blood. And therefore, often people complain of some kind of visual disturbance and, uh, and hearing disturbance. Then people will say, oh, my heart started beating fast. Of course, the heart will beat fast because now the body is starting to notice that there's a lack of blood. So the heart will start beating fast. And eventually, despite the poor heart's efforts, nothing can happen. And therefore, the patient slumps. This is typical reflex vasovagal syncope. It's called vasovagal syncope. Okay. And the, the way to treat it is to increase your fluid intake, increase your salt intake. So the more volume you have in your body, the less likely it is that even after the effects of gravity that your brain will become devoid of this volume. All right, so you need to be overfilled with fluid in your body and that will reduce it. Also things like compression stockings because if you wear these stockings then they tighten up the legs and therefore there's a less chance that the blood will go will sink to the legs. Uh, so those are the kind of things for that. Now uh, blackouts are a lot more worrying because there's no warning and although they can occur for a lot of reasons it is really important that if you've suffered a blackout there's two really important well there's more than two things there's a few things that are, you really must bear in mind if you have anyone in your family who has dropped down dead suddenly at a young age without warning then it is incredibly important if you have had a blackout to arrange to go and see a cardiologist, a heart specialist. I wouldn't settle for going and seeing your local GP. I would go and ask to see a heart specialist because sometimes you can have these inherited conditions, you know, which are associated with sudden, you know, sudden heart rhythm disturbances, etc. And it may well be that you've inherited and your blackout may be the first manifestation of that. Similarly, um, if your blackout occurs when you're running, then that's a little bit of a, that's a real worry, you know, because the heart is working harder and therefore you worry that when the heart is working harder, maybe it's misbehaving and that's caused the blackout. Uh, the third thing to say is otherwise, if you've had a blackout and particularly one if that has resulted in injury, and most of them do cause injury, proper blackouts, uh, then you want to see someone sooner rather than later because you don't want the next one to happen or cause injury. The next thing to say is that if you've suffered a blackout, you mustn't drive uh, because by doing so, you're endangering your life and uh, the life of other passengers. So you mustn't drive. You should really tell the DVLA and you should really organize to come and see a consultant cardiologist. Again, okay? what a consultant cardiologist will do is the first thing he should recommend is to have a monitor put in. And usually this is in the shape of a reveal device that they put under the skin because you cannot predict when the next one is going to happen and therefore you need a monitor on your person at all times uh, for you know one two years so that when the next one happens you can pick up exactly what ha was happening with the heart the other thing that a cardiologist would usually do is do a heart scan to make sure you have structurally normal heart to make sure that the heart is not weak and that's why it's not misbehaving and to make sure that your valves are okay and that you're not sitting on a very tight heart valve which is actually stopping the blood from going to the brain um, and the third thing a cardiologist should do is put you on the treadmill and make the heart work really hard and make sure that the heart behaves okay when you're on the treadmill so if you've had a blackout, I think it's a serious thing, and I think you should see a cardiologist sooner rather than later. Uh, on the other hand, if you've fainted, then that's slightly less serious. But nevertheless, it's always worth coming and seeing one of us and uh, put, having your mind put at rest. So I hope this was helpful. All right, so we're um, uh, more than just medicine. Myself and Simon Smells and Tom, we're working really hard to try and get this channel up and running. Uh, we would really, really appreciate it if you consider sharing some of these videos. We hope as time progresses to try and get a lot of other healthcare professionals. And we hope to set up a nice database of common medical conditions so that you can get good, reliable advice 
from healthcare professionals that you have some confidence in. Uh, and so you're not having to resort to going on to Google and listening to everyone's horror stories and getting uh, frightened um, about all the horrible things that could happen to you. Uh, and my, my own feeling and Simon's feeling is that, you know, ideally that should be freely available for people on the internet and so that you're not having to wait for months to see a doctor and getting so worried whilst you're waiting that it impacts on your quality of life. So I hope this was helpful. Please consider sharing this and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. Bye.